Hey, good morning, everybody. Sorry, I was on another screen. Good morning, everybody. It is uh, uh, Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. It's time for Bible Reading Fellowship. We're going to pick up our reading this morning in Song of Solomon, Chapter 1. Song of Solomon 1, reading out of the Legacy Standard Bible, the LSB. If you uh, do not have your own copy of this translation, you can open up a second tab on your computer. Hey, Peter. Open up a second tab on your computer and in the search bar type read, R-E-A-D dot lsbible.org, read dot lsbible.org. John, welcome back. Um, when that page opens up, type uh, um, the Song of Songs. The Song of Songs is the way it's listed in the LSB. The Song of Songs 1, and uh, hit enter, that'll bring up the text. Evan, good morning. Follow along as we read, and when we get to the end of the chapter, just click on the right arrow, and that'll move you right along to uh, chapter number two. Chapter number two. Uh, got a video for you that I posted uh, posted yesterday of another conversation I had out at the uh, University of Iowa with a young man named Yadel. And uh, if you watch to the end, I'm going to talk about a mistake I made in that conversation. Won't uh, I logged in late today, so we're not going to take the time to go over it today. But but um, log log in there, uh, watch that video to the end, and I uh, think there'll be something helpful there for you. It was a good conversation with Yadel, who tried to make the argument um, while professing to be a Christian that the Bible sees unborn children not as humans but as property, and so we talked about that a bit. So so I hope that will. Uh, Hope that will encourage you. Um, uh, the reason I was late, the reason I was late logging in is we 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 have some pretty nasty weather here today. It's cold, it's rainy, um, and we've got, according to radar, we've got another real heavy batch of rain coming. And so I wanted to uh, I wanted to um, uh, get Roxy out for her second walk of the day. Um, uh, because it's probably going to be a while before I could take her out again in this weather. So wanted to make sure to get her out before this next band hit, because looks like there might be a little thunder in there too. So and she does not like to be outside. She does not like to be anywhere, but right up next to someone in the family's hip, <laughs> if there is thunder going on outside. So, all right, we're going to jump right into it today. Um, and, uh, Again, picking up our reading in the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon, um, depending on what translation you're reading. And Okay, those two are sticking together for some reason. There we go. All right. Got a few people logged in, a few in the chat. Yeah, well... Um, so Evan, that's a that's a long conversation. Um, there are two different perspectives. There are people who believe that tongues are for today. Um, they would be classified as charismatics, and there are folks like me who are classified as cessationists, who believe the more extraordinary gifts like speaking in tongues, prophecy, word of knowledge, healing, that sort of thing, um, was uh, for the. Uh, uh, proliferation of the gospel for the first time, and uh, it was for the apostolic age, the age of the apostles. Once there were no more apostles, and there are no apostles today, uh, those those gifts ceased. Uh, tongues is is badly abused uh, um, within charismatic circles, um, often without an interpreter. People thinking that it's just babble. That it's some kind of just uh, some kind of spiritual language or angelic language, uh, but every use of the term tongue uh, or tongues uh, in the Book of Acts and in Paul's writings, uh, particularly in First uh, uh, Corinthians twelve through fourteen, um, that, those all refer to known languages, known languages, and that's and that's uh, validated, verified by what we see in Acts chapter two as as the people gathered from all around the region, uh, many different countries, thinking that Peter and the others, uh, the 120 who were gathered, were drunk when it was uh, early in the day. 
um, they were hearing they were hearing the gospel being proclaimed in their native language and so so that's just a short discourse on that there are genuine brothers and sisters in christ on both sides of this discussion certainly it's not a salvific issue um but an important one all right let's begin our time in a word of prayer and uh and we will get started father Thank you for this day. Father, thank you for allowing the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. Thank you, Father, here for here in Iowa, watering the ground. Our, uh, we have uh, been short of rain, as man would see it, for quite some time. And <clears throat> So help me and help every other Christian in this region not complain about the weather, because you are sovereign over the weather. You cause the weather. You uh, determine what the weather is and to complain about the rain or the snow or the wind or the heat or or any aspect of weather to complain about it is to complain against you father and uh, i know i for one do too much grumbling uh as it is and so uh for me and for my brethren help us not to grumble about something like the weather and father you who do allow the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike, Father, are so good to extend your common grace to all mankind and your special grace to your people, Father, having caused us to be born again to a living hope through faith in your Son. And so, Father, we as your people gather this morning to worship you through the reading of your word. And we ask, Father, that you would indeed bless the reading of it for your own glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Spurgeon's morning devotion for today <coughs> is drawn from Matthew 27, 14, which reads in part, he answered him to, uh, to never a word. He answered him to never a word. He answered him to never a word. Okay. Obviously, this is drawn from the King James. Spurgeon writes, he had never been slow of speech when he, when he could bless the sons of men, but he would not say a single word for himself. Never man spake like this man, and never man was silent like him. Was the singular silence the index of his perfect self-sacrifice? Did it show that he would not utter a word to stay the slaughter of his sacred person, which he had dedicated as an offering for us? Had he so entirely surrendered himself that he would not interfere in his own behalf, even in the minutest degree? but be bound and slain and an unstruggling, uncomplaining victim? Was the silence a type of the defenselessness of sin? Nothing can be said in uh, uh, palliation of excuse of human guilt, and therefore he who bore its whole weight stood speechless before his judge. Is not patient silence the best reply to a gainsaying world? Calm endurance answers some questions infinitely more conclusively than the loftiest eloquence. The best apologists for Christianity in the early days were its martyrs. The anvil breaks a host of hammers by quietly bearing their blows. Did not the silent Lamb of God furnish us with a grand example of wisdom? Where every word was occasion for new blasphemy, it was the line of duty to afford no fuel to the flame of sin. The ambiguous and the false, the unworthy and mean, will ere long overthrow and confute themselves, and therefore the true can afford to be quiet and find silence to be its wisdom. Evidently, our Lord, by his silence, furnished a remarkable fulfillment of prophecy. A long defense of himself would have been contrary to Isaiah's prediction. He is led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as sheep before its her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By his quiet, he conclusively proved himself to be the true Lamb of God. As such, we salute him this morning. Be with us, Jesus. And in the silence of our heart, let us hear the voice of thy love. Amen. All right. Picking up our reading this morning in the Song of Songs, chapter 1. Again, if uh, anyone is just joining us or new with us, we're reading out of the Legacy Standard Bible, the LSB. The Song of Songs, chapter 1, God's Word tells us this. The song of songs, which is Solomon's, may he kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Your oils have a pleasing fragrance. Your name is like purified oil. Therefore, the maidens love you. Draw me after you and let us run together. The king has brought me into his chambers. 
we will rejoice in you and be glad. We will extol your love more than wine. Rightly do they love you. I am black but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not look at me because I am swarthy, for the sun has burned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me caretaker of the vineyards, but I have not taken care of my own vineyard. Tell me, O you whom my soul loves, where do you shepherd your flock? Where do you make it lie down at noon? For why should I be like one who veils herself beside the flocks of your companions? If you yourself do not know, most beautiful among women, go forth on the trail of the flock and pasture your young goats by the dwellings of the shepherds. To a mare of mine among the chariots of Pharaoh, I compare you, O oh my darling. Your cheeks are lovely with ornaments, your neck with strings of beads. We will make for you ornaments of gold with beads of silver. While the king was at his banqueting table, my perfume gave forth its fragrance. My beloved is to me a pouch of myrrh, which lies all night between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms in the vineyard of Engedi. Behold, you are beautiful, my darling. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are like doves. Behold, you are handsome, my beloved. Indeed, so pleasant. Indeed, our couch is luxuriant. The beams of our houses are cedars, our rafters are cypresses. Chapter 2. I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among the thorns, so is my darling among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest, so is my beloved among the sons. In his shade I had great desire and sat down, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He has brought me to his house of banqueting, and his banner over me is love. Sustain me with raisin cakes, refresh me with apples, because I am lovesick. Let the, his left hand be under my head, and his right hand embrace me. I call you to solemnly swear, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the hinds of the field, that you do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. The voice of my beloved, behold, he is coming, leaping on the mountains, jumping on the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he is standing behind our wall. He gazes through the windows. He is peering through the lattice. My beloved answered and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come along. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over, it is gone. The flowers have appeared in the land, the time for pruning has arrived, and the voice of the turtle dove has been heard in our land. The fig tree has ripened its figs, and the vines in blossom have given forth their fragrance. Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come along. Pardon me for just a moment. Just saying goodbye to my ladies. Uh, verse 14. O oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the secret place of the steep pathway, let me see your appearance. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your appearance is lovely. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, we are in Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15. Seize the foxes for us, the little foxes that are uh, wreaking destruction on the vineyards while our vineyards are in blossom. My beloved is mine, and I am his, he who shepherds his flock among the lilies. Until the day breeze and the shadows flee, turn, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of Bether. Chapter 3. On my bed, night after night, I sought him, whom my soul loves. I sought him, but did not find him. I must arise now and go about the city, in the streets, and in the squares. I must seek him, whom my soul loves. I sought him, but did not find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me, and I said, Have you seen him whom my soul loves? Scarcely had I passed them by. When I found him whom my soul loves, I seized him and, and uh, would not let him go, until I had brought him to my mother's house and into the chamber of, of her who conceived me. I call you to solemnly swear, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and, or by the hinds of the field, that you do not arouse or awaken my love until she pleases. Who is this coming up from the wilderness like columns of smoke as rising incense of myrrh and frankincense while all scented powders of the merchant, with all scented powders of the merchant? Behold, it is the tra uh, traveling couch of Solomon, 60 mighty men around it, all the mighty men of Israel. All of them are those who seize the sword, learn, learned in war. Each man his, has his sword at his side, guarding against the dreadful things of the night. 
King Solomon has made for himself a, a sedan chair from the timber of Lebanon. He made its posts of silver, its back of gold, and its seat of purple fabric. With its interior inlaid with love by the daughters of Jerusalem, go forth and, and see, O daughters of Zion, uh, King Solomon with the crown uh, with which his mother has crowned him on the day of his wedding and on the day of his gladness of heart. Behold, you are beautiful, my darling, chapter 4. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats. They have leapt down from Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of newly shorn ewes, which have come up from their washing, all of which bear twins, and not one among them has lost her young. Your lips are like a scarlet thread, and your mouth is lovely. Your temples are like a slice of pomegranate behind your veil. Your neck is like the Tower of David, built with rows of stones on which are hung 1,000 shields, all the small shields of the mighty men. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle, which feed among the lilies until the day breathes and the shadows flee. I will go my way to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. You are altogether beautiful, my darling, and there is no blemish in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. May you come with me from Lebanon. Journey down from the top of Amana, from the top of Sinir and Hermon, from the dens of lions, from the mountains of leopards. You have made my heart beat faster, my sister, my bride. You have made my heart beat faster with a single glance of your eyes, with a single strand of your necklace. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your oils, than all kinds of spices. Your lips, my bride, drip honey from the comb. Honey and milk are under uh, your tongue and the fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of lebanon a garden locked is my sister my bride a rock garden locked a spring sealed up your shoots are an or orchard of pomegranates with choice fruits henna with nard plants nard and saffron calamus and cinnamon with all the trees of frankincense myrrh and aloes along with all the finest spices you are a garden spring a well of fresh water and streams flowing from lebanon Awake, O north wind, and come, wind of the south. Make my garden breathe out fragrance. Let its spices flow forth. May my beloved come into his garden and eat its choice fruits. Chapter 5. I have come into my garden, my sister, my bride. I have picked my myrrh along with my balsam. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, friends, drink and imbibe deeply, O lovers. I was asleep, but my heart was awake. A voice, my beloved, was knocking. Open to me, my sisters, my darling, my dove, my perfect one, for my head is full of dew, my locks with the damp of the night. I have taken off my long sleeve garment. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I dirty them again? My beloved sent forth his hand through the opening, and my feelings moaned for him. I arose to open my hand, to open to my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, and my fingers with liquid myrrh. On the Handles of the lock I opened I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and passed by. My soul went out to him as he spoke. I searched for him, but I did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer me. The watchmen who the watchmen who go about in the city found me. They struck me and wounded me. The guardsmen of the walls took away my shawl from me. I, I call you to solemnly swear, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, what will you tell him? Tell him that I am sick with love. What is your beloved that he is more than any other beloved, O most beloved among women? What is your beloved that he is more than any other beloved, that thus you call us to solemnly swear? My beloved is dazzling and ruddy, lifted up as a banner among ten thousand. His head is like gold, fine gold. His locks are like clusters of dates and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves, beside streams of water washed in milk, and sitting in their setting. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, towers of sweet-scented herbs. His lips are lilies, dripping with liquid myrrh. His hands are rods of gold, set with beryl. His abdomen is a plate of ivory inlaid with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble, set on bases of fine gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as, as the cedars. His mouth is full of sweetness, and he is wholly desirable. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Chapter 6. Where is your beloved gone, O most beautiful among women? Where has your beloved turned, that we may seek him with you? My beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of spices, 
to shepherd his flock in the gardens and gather lilies. Morning, Chris. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine, he who shepherds his flock among the lilies. You are as beautiful as Terza, my darling, as lovely as Jerusalem, and majestic, as majestic as an army with banners. Turn your eyes away from me, for they have overwhelmed me. Your hair is like a flock of goats that have leapt down from Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes, which have come up from their washing, all of which bear twins, and not one among them has lost her young. Your temples are like a slice of a pomegranate behind your veil. There are sixty queens and eighty concubines and maidens without number. She is the only one, my dove, my perfect one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the pure one of her who bore her. The daughters saw her and called her blessed. The queens and the concubines also, and they praised her, saying, Who is this that looks down like the dawn, as beautiful as the full moon, as pure as the sun, as majestic as an army with banners? I went down to the garden of nut trees to see the blossoms of the valley, to see whether the vine had flourished or the pomegranates had bloomed. I did not know it, but my soul set me among the chariots of my noble people. Come back, come back, O Shulamite. Uh, come back, come back, that we may behold you. Why should you behold a Shulamite, Shulamite as at the dance of the two companies? Chapter 7. How beautiful are your feet and sandals, O noble's daughter. The curves of your thighs are like ornaments, the work of the hands of an artist. Your navel is like a round basin, which never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is like a heap of wheat encircled with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like a tower of ivory. Your eyes like the pools of, in Heshbon by the gate of bath -Rabim. Your nose is like the tower of Lebanon, which faces... Toward Damascus, your head crowns you like Carmel, and the flowing locks of your head are like purple threads. The king is captivated by your tresses. How beautiful and how pleasant you are, my love! With all your pleasures, your statue, your stature is like a palm tree, and your breasts are like its clusters. I said, I will climb the palm tree. I will seize its fruit stalks. Oh, may your breast be like clusters of the vine, and the fragrance of your breath like apples, and your mouth like the best wine. It goes down smoothly for my beloved, flowing gently through the lips of those who fall asleep. I am my beloved, and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go into the fields. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let us rise early and go to the vineyards. Let us see whether the vine has flourished and its blossoms have opened, and whether the pomegranates have bloomed. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes have given forth fragrance, and over our doors are all choice fruits, both new and old, which I have treasured up for you, my beloved. Morning, Maria. Uh, Song of Songs, Chapter 8. Oh, that you were like a brother to me, who nursed at my mother's breasts. If I found you outside, I would kiss you. No one would despise me either. I would lead you and bring you into the house of my mother, who used to teach me. I would give you spiced wine to drink from the sweet wine of my pomegranates. Uh, let his left hand be under my head and his right hand embrace me. I call you to solemnly swear, O daughters of Jerusalem, why should you arouse or awaken my love until she pleases? Who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Beneath the apple tree I awakened you. There your mother was in labor with you. There she was in labor and gave you birth. Put me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as severe as Sheol. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of Yah. Many waters cannot quench love, nor will rivers overflow it. If a man were to give all the riches of his house for love, it would be utterly despised. We have a little sister, and she has no breasts. We, what shall we do for our sister on the day when she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build on her a battlement of silver. But if she is a door, we will barricade her with planks of cedar. I was a wall, and my breasts were like towers. Then I became in his eyes as one who finds peace. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman. He gave the vineyard to caretakers. Each one was to bring 1,000 shekels of silver for its fruit. My very own vineyard is before me. The 1,000 shekels are for you, Solomon and two hundred are for those who take care of its fruit. O oh, you who sit in the gardens, my companions are giving heed to your voice. Let me hear it. 
Hurry, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. Isaiah chapter 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, concerning Judah and Jerusalem, which he beheld in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for Yahweh speaks. Sons I have reared and raised up, but they have transgressed against me. An ox knows its owner, and a donkey its master's manger. But Israel does not know, my people do not perceive. Alas, sinful nation, people heavy with iniquity, seed of evildoers, sons who act corruptly. They who forsake Yahweh, they have spurned the Holy One of Israel, they have become estranged with him. Where will you be stricken again as you continue in your rebellion? The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is nothing sound in it, only bruises, wounds, and raw wounds. Not pressed out, not bandaged, not softened with oil. Your land is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your fields, stra uh, your fields, strangers, are devouring them in your presence. It is desolate, is overthrown by strangers. The daughter of Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a watchman hut, watchman's hut in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. Unless Yahweh of hosts has left us a few survivors, we would be like Solomon, we would be like Gomorrah. Hear the word of Yahweh, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are you multiplied? What are your multiplied sacrifices to me? Says Yahweh. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle, and in the blood of bulls, lambs, or goats, I take no pleasure. When you come to appear before me, who requires of you this trampling of my courts? Bring your worthless offerings, no longer incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath, the calling of convocation. I cannot endure wickedness in the solemn assembly. My soul hates your new moon festivals and your appointed times. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Indeed, even though you multiply prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, purify yourselves, remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, execute justice for the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says Yahweh. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. If you are willing and obey, you will eat the best of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh is spoken. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Rosebud. Hi, Bethany. Papa loves you. Verse 21. How the faithful city has become a harlot. She who has she who is full of justice. Righteousness once lodged in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross. Your drink diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and pursues rewards. They do not execute justice for the orphan, nor do, does the widow plea, widow's plea come before them. Therefore the Lord Yahweh of hosts. The mighty one of Israel declares, Ah, I will be comforted concerning my adversaries, and I will avenge myself on my enemies. I will also turn my hand against you, and will smelt away your dross as with lie, and will remove all your allies. Oh, hi, Jashani. Didn't know you were there, sweetheart. Hi, Jashani. Grandpa loves you, sweetheart. Um, uh, verse 25, I think. I will also turn my hand against you, and will smelt away your dross as with lie, and will remove all your alloy. Yeah, I read that. Verse 26, then I will have your judges return as at the first, and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterwards, you will be called the city of righteousness, a faithful town. Zion will be redeemed with justice and a repentant ones with righteousness. But transgressors and sinners will be broken together, and those who forsake Yahweh will come to an end. For you will be ashamed of the oaks which ha you have desired, and you will be humiliated because of the gardens which you have chosen. For you will be like an oak whose leaf withers away or as a garden uh, that has no water. And the strong man will become tender, his work also a spark. Thus they shall both burn together and there will be none to quench them. Chapter 2. The word which Isaiah the son of Amos beheld concerning Judah and Jerusalem, now it will be that in the last days, the mountain of the house of Yahweh will be established as the head of the mountains and will be lifted up above the hills and all the nations will stream to it and many peoples will come and say, 
Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us from his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For from Zion the law will go forth, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem, and he will judge between the nations and will render decisions for many peoples. And they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, and, and never again will they learn war. Come, house of Jacob, and let us walk in the light of Yahweh. For you have abandoned your people, the house of Jacob, because uh, they are filled with influences from the east, and they are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they strike bargains with the children of foreigners. Their land also has also been filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land has also been filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land has also been filled with idols. They worship the work of their hands, that which their fingers have made. So the common man has been bowed down, and the man of importance has been made low. But do not forgive them. Enter the rock and hide in the dust. From the dread of Yahweh and from the splendor of his majesty, the lofty look of, of man will be made low, and the man made high will be bowed down, and Yahweh alone will be exalted in that day. For Yahweh of hosts will have a day of reckoning against everyone who is proud and high and against everyone who is lifted up, that he may be made low. And it will be against all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, against the oaks of Bish all the oaks of Bashan, against all the high mountains, against all the hills that are lifted up, against every lofty tower, against every fortified wall, against all the ships of Tarshish, and against all the desirable craft. The loftiness of man will be bowed down, and the man who are high will be made low, and Yahweh alone will be exalted in that day, but the idols will completely vanish. Men will go into caves of the rocks and into holes of the ground before the dread of Yahweh and the splendor of his majesty when he arises to make the earth tremble. In that day, men will cast away to the moles and the bats their idols of silver and their idols of gold, which they made for themselves to worship in order to go into the caverns of the rocks and the clefts of the cliffs. Before the dread of Yahweh and the splendor of his majesty when he arises to make the earth tremble, Stop regarding man whose breath of life is in his nostrils, for why should he be esteemed? And uh, we'll finish with chapter 3 this morning. Uh, that'll be 11 chapters today. For behold, the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, is going to remove from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support, the whole supply of bread and the whole support of water. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder, the commander of fifty and the highly respected man, the counselor and the wives craftsman, and the experienced enchanter. And I will make young men their princes, and capricious children will rule over them, and the people will be oppressed, each one by another, and each one by his neighbor. The youth will overwhelm the elder and the dishonorable against the honorable. When a man grasps his brother in his father's house, saying, You have a cloak, you shall be our ruler. And these ruins will be under your hand. He will protest on that day, saying, I will not be your leader, your healer. For in my house there is neither bread nor cloak. You should not appoint me ruler over the people. For Jerusalem has stumbled and Judah has fallen, because their tongue and their deeds are against Yahweh, to rebel against his glorious presence. The expression of their faces answers uh, against them, and they declare their sin like Sodom. They do not even conceal it. Woe to their soul for they have dealt out evil on themselves. Say to the righteous that it will go well with them, for they will eat the fruit of their deeds. Woe to the wicked! It will go badly with them, with him. For what he has dealt out will be done to him. O oh, my people, their taskmasters are infants and women rule over them. O oh, my people, those who guide you, lead you astray, and swallow up the way of your paths. Yahweh takes his stand to contend and stands to judge the peoples. Yahweh enters into judgment with the elders of his people and his princes. It is you who have consumed the vineyard. The plunder robbed of the afflicted in, is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the face of the afflicted, declares Lord Yahweh of hosts. Moreover, Yahweh said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and seductive eyes and go along with mincing steps and tinkle the bangles on their feet, Therefore the Lord will smite the skull of the daughters of Zion with scabs, and Yahweh will make their foreheads bare. 
In the day, the Lord will remove the beauty of their anklets, headbands, crescent ornaments, dangling earrings, bracelets, veils, headdresses, ankle chains, sashes, perfume boxes, enchanted charms, finger rings, nose rings, festal robes, outer tunics, cloaks, money purses, hand mirrors, undergarments, turbans, and shawls. Now it will be that instead of sweet perfume, there will be the smell of rot. Instead of a belt, a rope. Instead of a well set, instead of well set hair, a plucked out scalp. Instead of fine clothes, a donning of sackcloth. And branding instead of beauty. Your men will fall by the sword. And your mighty ones in battle. And her gates will lament and mourn. And deserted, she will sit on the ground. All right, we're going to stop there. Uh, Lord willing, um, at our regular time tomorrow, 7 a.m. Central, we will pick up in Isaiah chapter 4. Isaiah chapter 4. Hi, Holly. Oh. Sorry to hear that, Holly. All right. I hope you all have a blessed day in the Lord, everybody. i uh, be praying for Holly and her family. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning for another edition of Bible Reading Fellowship. Have a great day, everyone.